The Roll20 Character Mancer makes creating characters quick and easy. For this example, we'll be using the D&D 5e character sheet by Roll20. Now before we can run you through the Character Mancer, we have to first start a character sheet. In your game, head on over to the top right hand corner of the screen and click the icon that looks like a newspaper. This is your journal section. This is where all your created PCs and NPCs will be shown. Right now you might not have anything in there, so let's get started. Click the add button in the top right corner of the journal section. A little drop down will appear asking if you want to create a character, a handout, or a folder. Click on character. A pop-up will appear. This is our character sheet settings. By default, Roll20 gives newly created characters a random name to start. So you can keep that name or use your own. Now, if we're making this character sheet for our players, make sure to select their name in the in player journal section and can be edited and controlled by section. If your players haven't logged into a game yet, their names won't appear here. You'll have to go back in later when they've been in the game and put their names in then. To get back to this page, you'll just open up the character sheet and click the edit button in the top right hand corner. Okay, let's get back to the page. If you have art or a token created for this character sheet, go ahead and upload it in this section. If you don't have a token, don't worry about it. It'll use the avatar artwork that you've already selected. Okay, after you're done with this page, click the blue save changes button in the bottom right hand corner. Great, now we have a character sheet started. We can fill in more information here in the info and bio section, but for right now, let's click on the second tab and look at our character sheet. You'll notice that you have a choice of creating a player character using the character mancer, creating an NPC, or editing the character sheet directly. Editing directly is exactly like it sounds. If you feel more comfortable doing the math and adding items by hand, this is the section for you. Now the main difference between the Character Mancer and making an NPC is that making a PC with the Character Mancer will help you create a full character sheet that you can add items, level up, and add skills and spells as you play. While an NPC build has a static stat block that you make one time and then you reference it as they appear in game like a shopkeeper or monster. Since we're creating a PC, click on the Use Character Mancer button. The Character Mancer will guide you through the process of setting up a level one character step-by-step. Step. You start by choosing a race, then an alignment. If you're unsure on what to choose from any of these options, check the compendium text on the right-hand side of the Character Mancer. Every time you choose something from the dropdown, a description of that choice will show up on the right-hand side. Okay, back to the build. Don't forget your language proficiency and also a subrace, if available. On the next page, you'll choose a class. For this example, I'm going to choose a sorcerer. Next, I'll choose my skill proficiencies, followed by my sorcerer's origin and my dragon ancestry. Okay, then you choose your abilities. There are a few options, from just rolling dice or rolling the average to even a standard array. Roll20 makes it pretty simple. Next, we have our background and our language proficiencies, followed by our personality traits. You can put in your own or roll some random ones. I'm gonna roll. Easy enough. All right, up next, we have equipment. We can pick class equipment or we can start with gold. Again, check in with your GM about this one. Now, if your character can cast spells, you can choose them here. The Character Mancer will only make spells available to you based on your level and class and what you've built so far. The same thing goes for feats. If you don't get access to feats or spells right now, don't worry about it. They'll show up as an option based on your level, class, and whatever compendium expansion you have added to your game. Lastly, we have our bio section. Now the Character Mancer will not flag you if you don't fill out this section, but it's just good to have. After you're done, if you missed anything, the review section will let you know. Some stuff is mandatory, but some stuff is optional, like backstory and bio. After you feel good about all your changes, you're all done. Click Apply Changes. That was easy. Now, if you ever need to level up your character, simply click on the gear icon in the top right corner of your character sheet, scroll down to the bottom right, and click Level plus Character Mancer. It will walk you through leveling up. Now, if you don't want to go through the Character Mancer and you just want to make an NPC, you would click the NPC button instead of the Character Mancer in the beginning of this process. Let's try that out you'll notice a lot of open fields that you can fill out for yourself. If we hit the gear icon, we'll get a preview of our NPC. We can add these in manually, or we can go to the compendium and drag and drop information from there. 
Say we wanted to have an NPC with the stats of a bugbear and a vicious dart. We go to the right hand corner of the screen and click the compendium button, the icon that looks like the letter I. We type in bugbear, expand it to double check if it's the right one. Looks pretty good. Now we just drag it onto our character sheet. Great. Let's add Vicious Dart to this character sheet as well. Go back up to the top, type in Dart, expand the selection to make sure it's the right one. Looks pretty good to me. Now drag it to the character sheet. Perfect. If you want to give them more spells and bonus actions, go right ahead. If you want to add abilities and actions, click on the plus button on the stat blocks and add them there. And just like that, you've made a PC and an NPC for your game. Have fun making more characters.